Matters. The topic of discussion today is falsehood religion. Good religion. In other words, fake religion. Religion that has now worked for 7,000 years. We in the Kasman cycle that started, a new cycle started in 1848, the year 1848, uh, which happens uh, to be the uh, 25th cycle, the light cycle um that started in the year 1848 um and that hawk circle the light circle is called the Kasman. so when the Kasman cycle and we still have false old religion and religion they continue to deny salvation what these religious people do is they magnify increase the bondage that awaits them christianity especially and then beside christianity you have the revised and upgraded version of christianity which they call Islam today. In both Christianity and Islam, the upgraded version of is, uh, of Christianity, which is uh, 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 Islam, have the highest amount of harvest in this world, and including the lower heaven. You know, and that's why my most of my focus in my video, I talk about Christianity most of the time, because they have the highest amount of harvest. You know, they have the highest amount of followers. So my, I most of the time talk about them. And after that is the revised version and upgraded version of Christianity, which is called Islam. In the future, uh, I'm going to do a video about Christianity and Islam, uh, interconnect them, how they came about. What happened was that the Islam God, the Muslim God, used to work for the Christian God. He was an angel for the Christian God. He was an angel warrior. His name is Gabriel. But he broke free from the Christian God because the Christian God promised him heaven above Jerusalem and he refused to give it to him. And he broke free and he created his own religion and created his own heaven. Um, that will be in the future how we uh, come up with the uh, Orapsi verses uh, about it. But those who read the Orapsi already know uh, the history behind Christianity and Islam. Um, so, and now... Uh, let's go back to this falsehood religion. The thing is, if your religion does not profess the creator, then that religion is falsehood. That religion is, is considered falsehood. If your religion do not teach resurrection, does not offer education in heaven, then your religion is falsehood. If your religion does not teach false second heaven and third heaven about first resurrection heaven second resurrection heaven and third heaven and your religion does not talk about ethereal the nirvanian heaven then your religion that religion is falsehood and your god is false too your god and that religion is fake because they don't mention they don't talk about first second and third heaven and they don't even talk about the nirvanian heaven they don't talk about ethereal let me go to uh, the book of judgment for a minute. The book of judgment, chapter 3, verse 27 to 31. I'm going to be reading from the book of judgment, chapter 3, verse 27 to 31. Here we go. Verse 27. When the Brahmins have suffered a people to fall from knowledge into ignorance or from virtue to vice, my judgment is against them. Verse 28. When the Buddhist has suffered our people to fall from knowledge into ignorance and from virtue into vice, my judgment is against them. Verse 29. When the Kayans, Kayans now, uh, those are considering themselves, those are the Confucianists, Confucian. Uh, that would be a religion that uh, operates between China and Japan and so on. Um, those are the Confucianists. Uh, what happens is that they had the real Confucian, uh can you but later on some people took some stuff in there and they become forced from there but you know it started including the buddha they those those they, they all these religions started as a good thing but as they they later on drift into darkness verse 29 when the Kayans have suffered a people to fall from knowledge into england or from virtue to into vice my judgment is against them verse 30 when the christians have suffered Verse 30, when the Christians have suffered a people, Christians, that's the way uh, Oapsi pronounced the Christians, have suffered a people to fall from knowledge into ignorance or from virtue into vice. My judgment is against them. Verse 31, when the Mohammedans, 
Mohammedans would be uh, what they call Islam or Muslim today. I've suffered a people to fall from knowledge into ignorance or from virtue into vice. My judgment is against them. You see that? So this is a falsehood religion that uh, the Oapsi sought out. In other words, the Oapsi, Oapsi Bible shows you this religion that is false. And those followers are also falsehood. So you're just wasting your time following this religion because it's falsehood. Book of Exodus chapter 29 verse 6 to 7. Verse 6. By worldly standard, it is easy to preach and call it religion. You hear that? But the foot must be measured by the city or the state that is saved from sin. Who then of all these priests in the temple can say, yeah, it's a community saved from sin. Let me, let, let me read this verse 6 again. So we could all understand clearly. So we'll be on the same page here. The book of Ezra chapter 29 verse 6 to 7. Verse 6. By worldly standards, it is easy to preach. In other words, you see a lot, a lot of religion people preaching. Pastors, prophets, they preach every day. They preach every Sunday. They call it religion. People go to church and listen to sermon every day, every Sunday, every Saturday. And they call it religion. Verse 6 is saying, but the fruit, in other words, the result, the result must be measured by the city or state that is saved from sin. Who then? So verse 6 is asking the questions, asking the pastors. It's asking the pastors. A perfect example is we have millions of uh, prophets and preachers, new churches in Nigeria today, right? And we have mega churches. Millions of people attend this church on Sunday. Now, how do you measure the result? What this verse is saying is the fruit. In other words, the output. What is the output? How do you measure the truth? We need to know how they're saved from sin. So yeah, he's asking who then of all the priests in the temple can say, yeah, it's a community saved from sin. How can these people in these churches come out? Or else he's asking, bring your result out. Show us the proof of your religion, the output, the result, the fruit of your religion. You know? For example, um, there was a time where the World Trade Center got demolished, crashed. Everybody know this story in 2001. Now, we all know it crashed. But what was the result after that? The U.S. government built the building back. That's your result. That's the fruit. All the African, like for example, the African country, if it was an African country that that happened, that building will not be resurrected back. They will not build that building back because the money they needed to do it, somebody wants to put the money in their pocket. Verse 6 is asking, it's easy to preach and call it religion. But what is the fruit? What is the fruit? We have to measure it by the city or state. If, if you look at New York City, for example, you know what? Forget New York City. If you look at Texas, for example, where you've got this popular guy Osin, Joel Osin. It's mega church, you know, he preaches, you know. What is the output? We cannot name one community saved from sin in that state. Now, if you come to New York City, it's the same thing. You got these mega persons that come to New York City and preach, you know, Madison Square Garden. Got this popular guy that goes there and preach. And then uh, you know, if you look at all these so-called prophets that rises from Nigeria every day, every day a new prophet and a new preacher is born in Nigeria. But yet, none of them, even their God, cannot give them 24-hour electricity in Nigeria right now. I'm going to go to verse 7. If they cannot do this, then they are themselves hypocrisy and blasphemer. You see that? So, your religion... Yo, yo, so you see what this is saying what verse 7 saying is that, that if you can help give us the result if you can produce the result then you're a blasphemer you're an hypocrite that's what the verse 7 is saying this religion is the, this religion people they are a bunch of blasphemers and they are hypocrites hypocrites I, I don't I don't get it Nigeria produces the highest amount of churches preachers 
pastors and they cannot come up with one town, one village, one city of peace. We still got corruptions. They can't even, they, they, the preachers and the pastors cannot even tell your God to give Nigeria 24 hour electricity. We still live in darkness in Nigeria today. I'm going to go to the book of Ezra, chapter 60, verse 31 to 32. And the funny thing about this religion, people, is that especially Christianity, is that they have money. It's not that they don't have money. They have money. Money is being produced. They're deceiving the people. You know, the preachers are vampires. They suck the followers dry. They collect your money in the form of tithes and offering. Book of Ezra, chapter 60, verse 31 to 32. The book of Ezra, chapter 60, verse 31 to 32. 31, behold, they have appropriated four great divisions of the earth to themselves, and the abodes, the heavens above them have become their dominion. Let them therefore keep what they have taken. Verse 32, because they have bound mortals by their religion and established themselves by mortal laws and by force of their standing armies, you shall give to them all they have become on earth and in heaven. See, what, what, what book of Ezra chapter 60 verse 31 is, to 32 is saying now is that, that this four major religion have created a division and a division right above the heaven also. They've created divisions. And what they're saying is that they bound humans by their religion and established mortal laws. In order they give laws and rules and commandments to to the followers to follow and they have armies when you go to some churches right now you see armies standing in front of the church you see security guards you see armies you see police officers standing or, or or in the middle now churches have security guards you see that this is what verse 32 is saying because they have bound mortals by their religion and established themselves by mortal laws and by force of the standing armies you shall give to them all they have bound on earth and in heaven. You know, well, let them have their harvest. You see, falsehood religion, religion that got security guards, religion that got armies, religion that got police officers. You know, they have pastors in Africa who can call the government of their country to do X, Y, Z. And that government will immediately do it for that pastor or that preacher. You see? The book of Leka, chapter 8, verse 17 to 18. The book of Leka, chapter 8, verse 17 to 18. Verse 17. But this bondage shall come upon them to reap the harvest they have sold. Because one has said, build a pyramid, and your God will come and abide in it. Even as a man dwells in a house, he shall be bound while the pyramid stands. Let's pause. In other words, a, 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 a preacher, a pastor, creates a church today and say, come to this church, I shall give you salvation. As long as that church stands and that religion stands, then you're bound to it because your soul will be bound to it. But the people who created it also are going to be bound to fall. Let me just finish it. Going to be bound. And I explain this clearly. And where, where another has said, behold, your God is in the image of a man. He sits on a, a throne in heaven. He shall be bound while this belief survives on the earth. Let me read verse 17 again. But this bondage shall come upon them to reap the harvest they have sowed. Because one has said, build a pyramid. And your God will come and abide in it. Even as a man dwells in the house, he shall be bound while the pyramid stands. And where another has said, behold, your God is in the image of man. He sits on the heavenly throne. He shall be bound while this belief survives on earth. Verse 18. Because they have sowed a falsehood on the earth, the harvest is there. And until they have reaped their whole harvest, until they have reaped their harvest, they shall not rise into my eternal world. You see the judgment right there? So what this verse, what this verse 17 and 18 is saying is that the religion people say that the creator is in the image of man, which is not true. Because they've said that the, religion, the, the, the creator is in an image of one. We get that from Genesis chapter 1. And a lot of people believe it. And they believe that the creator is sitting in a throne, which is a lie. Then you're bound to that. And 
whoever continues to talk about it, as long as this belief system remains, then those people are bound to this falsehood. And the people who created it, the harvest is theirs. In other words, yeah, the creator gives you the harvest, but you shall not rise into the Ethereum world. In other words, you shall not rise to the higher realms. You shall not rise to the higher heaven. So you followers, you, you believers of all this image of God being on the throne and you build a, a belief system and people still follow it and people continue to follow it. You know, today they have people that still go back to Egypt and believe Osiris is somewhere in uh, Egypt in the pyramid. You've got people who believe that the Kemet religion, that they can go to Egypt and find something there in the pyramid area and or they could find some kind of uh, writing inscription somewhere in egypt they can use and people still believe that so these people are still bound you see that so whoever created that concept is still going to be bound in the lower heaven and that person will not rise into the higher heaven until this that belief system. in other words as long as your christian belief system remains then the god who created that will be bound this is what this book of Leica chapter 18 verse 17 is saying without sugar coating. I'm going to go to the book of Judgment chapter 6 verse 7 to 10 and verse 15. I'm going to read from the book of Judgment chapter 16 verse 17, sorry, verse 7 to 10 to 15 and 15. The book of Judgment chapter 16 verse 7 to 10 and verse 15, verse 7. The word labor or work is easily understood. Verse 8. Do not allow yourself to be deceived by those whose trade, you see here, yeah? whose trade is preaching and praying. They profess to be laboring for the spiritual man. And according to the numbers of their convert, you see there, you have mega churches today. You've got, you know, um, you've got pastors that got mega churches, you know. There's a popular guy in Nigeria, Degboye. You know, he's got a big, huge church right there. You know, there are many of them. You know, Chris Oyaki Lome. There's, there's huge pastors in Nigeria today. Uh, they even have them in America. You know, Joel Osteen. He's got a mega church. Huge. You know, there are a lot of them. Plenty of them. Uh, listen to this. Do not allow yourself. So, you see, verse 8 is telling you, do not allow yourself to be deceived. By those who trade is preaching and praying. You, this is what these pastors and preachers and prophets do. They preach to you every Sunday. They preach to you every day. And they pray to you. They pray and pray and pray. They profess to be laboring for the spiritual man. And according to the number of their converts. According to the number of their converts. I'm still reading from verse 8. Who have also taught words, prayers and confession. Instead of works. So are they called great workers for the Lord. Verse 9. But I say to you, all these are only the subterfuges of Satan to palm off words for work. So verse 8 and 9 is actually saying these people are not doing no work. All they do is confession, praying, and preaching. But they, they have no work. How do you mention the work? It's by looking at that community where that church is built. To see if they've got rid of poverty. Now, I'm just going to use an example. We've got what? Give and take in Lagos. We've got what? 20. I'm just going to use 20 churches. 20 mega churches in Lagos. And what this verse 8 and 9 is saying is. How you tell that what they're doing is right. Is that it's by their works. In other words, the output. How do you measure that? How do you know? The way you know is you look at the community where that church exist you see have they got rid of poverty no Do, have they given increase of job no have they provided road better road infrastructure have they given better education system no have they given us 24 hour electricity no have they given water you see what i'm saying this is how you measure the works verse 15 because he did not practice labor you hear that so verse 7 and 8 is basically telling you their trade is preaching and praying and confessions but they're not doing work 
So verse 15 is concluding because he did not practice labor, but as a beggar, you see, and a vampire obtained his money, not for works, but for what he was forced before Jehovah. You see that? So verse 15 is telling you that those mega churches are just begging for money. They put that collection. Nowadays, the mega churches today in the entire world, in America, in Africa, wherever all these mega churches exist or are located, what they do is they ask for money. They come on TV now. They come on YouTube now. They, 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 they write books now. They ask for money. They beg for money. They're vampires. That's, that's what verse 15 is saying, that these are vampires. They obtain their money in form of vampires. They've not worked, but they're asking you for money. They collect money from tithes and offering. You see? Falsehood religion. That's how they collect your money. Tithes and offering. They ask you for money. They, they ask you who can donate a thousand dollars so they could pray for blessing. They ask you somebody should come out and donate five hundred dollars and we will bless you this week. Vampire. Vampire. That's how they, they become rich. When you look at these pastors, these preachers, these prophets, you look at your houses, they have luxurious cars, luxurious buildings, luxurious homes. But you, the follower, don't have nothing. You live in an apartment. You can't even pay your bill. You can't even pay your rent. You can't pay for your electricity bill. You can't pay for your light bill. You can't pay for your gas bill. But yet, these pastors and preachers live in the luxurious uh, homes and buildings and have cars, but they took their money from you. You see? Now I'm going to go to the next chapter. Um, I'm going to be reading from the book of Judgment. Chapter 3, verse 44 to 46. The book of Judgment. Chapter 3, verse 44 to 46. Verse 44. And you may call. Listen to this. This is you that profess that you think Christ, your Jesus, is the true God. And Christ is your true God. Right? And the God that you worship under Christianity, Islam, Buddha, and Hinduism is the true God. I want you to listen to this verse carefully. The book of Judgment, chapter 3, verse 44 to 46. Verse 44. And you may call on your idols at the gates of my heaven. This is true God speaking now. But the gates shall not be opened to you. For I will have no quarrel in my exalted kingdoms in heaven as to gods and lords and saviors. You know, this sounds familiar. You people that say Jesus is your savior. Jesus is your Lord and your savior. What the true God of heaven and earth is saying in verse 44 is, I shall have no quarrel in my exalted kingdom in heaven. In other words, they're not even going to open the gate of their exalted kingdom to you. So uh, 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 an example for you to get a proper understanding of this is that consider New York City has the Christian heaven. Listen to this carefully. And then consider Albany. Albany in New York. Albany, the location of Albany as the true exalted kingdom that true God and his followers dwell. And then New York City is where the Christian God heaven is. So the, the New York City is considered as the New York, as the, the Christian God heaven. And you've got followers from New York City that lives in New York City. They went to Albany to file a complaint. They want, they, they hide you saying that, that, that the Christian God is true, true God. And verse 44 is saying that, that you may call on your idols at the gates of my heaven. You see that? You may call on Jesus at my gate. You may call on your Christian God at my gate. But the gates shall not be opened. So the gates that surround Albany shall not be opened unto you. This is what this verse is saying. For I will have no quarrel in my exalted kingdom in heaven as to God and lords and saviors. And you know, you see a lot of Christians that argue with other people saying that, that their God is the true God. The Islam say that the God, that the Islamic God, that Allah is the true God. We get this in our world. Arguments. Verse 45. To you are washed clean of them. You see that? Coming in spotlight white, a servant of the Most High. You cannot withstand 
the light of my kingdoms in heaven. Now, yeah, for, verse 45 is a secret now. A lot of people don't know that. That there are different lights. In other words, there are different consciousness in heaven. So the grades, your grade is what determines the light. So so the considered the the heaven of the true God uh, measuring light 90, 95. And New York City, where the Christian God heaven is, is 45. So if you try to go to Auburn, you cannot even withstand the light. See, and there are examples in, in the website that talks about this lighting. Uh, there was a situation with the Pharaoh who who was brought up to true God when they needed they, they summoned Moses. And uh, the Pharaoh, Nugan, could not even withstand the light. Verse 46. But you shall return in spirit to earth. You see that? And abide in the church and temple of your chosen God. You see what 46 is saying? But you shall return. So all these, all you, all you followers of Christianity today in heaven are going to go back, come back to our world. You see? But you shall return to this in spirit to the earth and abide in the church and temple of your chosen God. They put temple there because you've got Hinduism that got temple. You got Buddha that got temple. And you shall abide in the church and temple of your chosen God. Wandering about in stubbornness of earth, a prey to judges, vampires, and other angels of darkness. The reason why you become a prey to judges, vampires, and other angels of darkness is because since you've made your argument point and you're not accepted even in the Christian God heaven, then a judgment or vampire or any angel of darkness can come meet you and say, Yo, I can uh provide you a better heaven in heaven. Forget the Christian God heaven. I'll give you this, I'll give you bliss in my heaven. Then come with me. You're gonna go. You know why? Because you don't even want to be in the Christian God heaven no more. And and the true God, heaven and earth, already said you cannot even withstand the light of my heavenly kingdom. So you come back abiding, living in church now, in spirit though. You see that? So verse 46 is beautiful. All you false hood religion people are going to come back to abide in church and temples, temple of your chosen God, wandering about in stubbornness of your heart. And then you become a prey to a judgment God, of a vampire God, and any angel of darkness. The final chapter, and this is going to land up the false hood religion topic. You know, all these verses, you know, just points and gives, tell, talks about it clearly without sugarcoating. The book of Ease, chapter 17, verse 28 to 29, and verse 32 to 40. The book of Ease, chapter 17, verse 28 to 29, and 32 to 40, verse 28. Yet then the judgment of Jehovah, whoever has established, whoever has established the name of any God, but the Creator, made it worshipful, on earth or in heaven shall be bound in the first resurrection till that name is no longer worshipable on earth or in heaven verse 29 and whatever god or goddess has said come to me you who are evelyn labor evelyn laden that sounds familiar in the bible and i will give you rest for him the way of salvation light and everlasting life then that god or goddess shall be bound in the first resurrection as long as mortals or angels go to him or are let's pause verse 29 again this is beautiful you need to understand this verse 29 is saying is let me read it again and whatever god or goddess has said come to me you who are evelyn laden and i will give you rest for i am the way of salvation this is very familiar for i am the way of salvation light and everlasting life in the bible jesus christ jesus or jesus christ or jesus proclaimed that he is the way of salvation and everlasting life that you have to go through him verse 29 is telling you then that god or goddess shall be bound in the first resurrection first resurrection heaven so they will be bound in the lowest first resurrection heaven as long as humans and angels go to him or her verse 32 while Osiris was worshipped, I gave to Osiris. While Astaroth was worshipped, I gave to her. Astaroth was a female goddess who deceived a lot of people 
including the Israelite. Believe it or not, Hashtagot actually deceived the Israelite, proclaimed myself God of heaven and earth, and deceived the Israelite. And the Israelite, the Israelite also followed him, including Baal. The next verse, while Baal was worshipped, I gave to Baal. The reason why is because Baal and Ashtoreth had a hold on the Israelites. And he, was a, he and she was able to deceive the Israelites. And other, other worlds now, not, they deceive people in Europe, in the European worlds, in the European countries. At one point, Baal even pretended to be the Greek god. You know, uh, you got to go to the book of wars and there's a lot of chapters in the watch that talks about this. Verse 35. But when any of these gods were no longer worshipped, behold, I gave to them no more subjects. In other words, when you stop worshipping Jesus, when you stop worshipping Jesus Christ, there's still some people that worship Osiris. So when you stop worshipping Osiris, then what this verse 35 is saying is that that the creator will no longer give to that God any more subjects. Verse 36, as long as Brahma is worshipped, I will give to him who is before me. Verse 37, as long as Buddha is worshipped, I will give to him who is before me. Verse 38, as long as Christ is worshipped, I will give to him who is before me. Verse 39, as long as Mohammedans are upheld on earth, I will give to him who built up Mohammedan. Mohammedan, you know, uh, Mohammed was the prophet who established uh, Islam. And what verse 39 is, um, is saying is, as long as Mohammedans are upheld on this earth, I will give to him who built up Mohammedan. And, and for those of you who don't know who built up uh, Islam, uh, is the angel Gabriel that actually built up Islam slash uh, what they call Muslim today, the Muslim religion, and Christ, uh, the the worship of Christ was uh, was created by the angel Luomon, verse forty. And when all of you have purified and raised up all those who idolize you, that is when I will raise you up to the higher heavens also. You see, so yeah, go ahead, worship your God. Follow your God. What this last verse on verse 40, book of 8, chapter 17 is saying is that even the Christian God and the Islamic God will not rise to the higher heaven until they've purified and raised up the followers. You see, what is the point of you being a follower of Jesus Christ or the follower of uh, the Christian God when you could be there for up to 1,000 years? While the people who don't believe in that, they, they are, for example, the fetus, they've, they've risen to the higher heaven and they bring us fetus back. We the fetus, we who believe in, in the creator, we don't follow religion concept, right? They bring us back to come raise you guys up. You see that? Like, it, it, it's, it's, you've lost, you lose a thousand years. You could even lose up to two thousand years believing in this concept. And then we that don't believe in it, we go through the educational process. We go through the first and second education uh, process and we rise and then we rise to interior and then we come back to come lift you guys up. You see, um, brothers and sisters, falsehood religion. Here you go. This book uh, of is just sum it up, you know, and there's a lot of uh, falsehood religion and you know, uh, the, the one that the beautiful one was that, you know, the book of judgment chapter three, um, verse 44 to 46, just some just says that, you know, they're going to, they, they're going to, the, the, the gate of the exalted kingdom shall not even be open unto you. You see, brothers and sisters, falsehood religion is the topic and, uh, they don't teach the religion. Don't even teach anything about first resurrection education. Second resurrection. If you've not watched my video on uh, education in heaven, you should go and watch it. Subscribe to my YouTube video. Brothers and sisters, you need to get away from this Christian religion, this Islamic religion, uh, and the Buddha religion and the Hinduism religion. You need to get away from it as soon as possible. 
trust me jesus christ is not going to save you in heaven because i did a video jesus christ is a judgment god in heaven brothers and sisters bye bye now subscribe to my youtube video